I'm on the Asus ROG Zenit 2 Extreme Alpha motherboard with Beta BIOS 0081 and an engineering sample of the Ryzen Threadripper 5990X 64 core processor. I also have 32GB of DDR4 memory installed. The default CPU frequency is 2500MHz, but we'll quickly sort that out to get more performance. I already made a profile for Cinebench R23, so let's load that up first. I'll then show you the relevant settings before going to the benchmark. Firstly, I used the OCP to load the XMP settings from the memory sticks. This kit is rated at DDR4 4266 CL19, but unfortunately that's too high of a frequency for this CPU. Usually I stick to DDR4 3600, but in this case I was able to get the DDR4 3733 to work. Note that we still load the XMP timings and voltage. I'm also running the fabric in synchronous mode with the memory. So that's 1866 MHz for DDR4 3733 memory. Then the bulk of the tuning is done in the CPU core ratio submenu. Here we get access to the core VID and the CCX ratios. Ryzen CPUs have a single voltage rail for all CPU cores called VDDCR CPU. We can set the target voltage for that voltage rail using the core VID setting. In this case, I've set it to 1.27 volt. As you'll see in a minute, that's on the edge for 64 cores in Cinebench R23 with water cooling. Then let's set the CPU ratios. Ryzen CPUs offer separate PLLs for every CCX. CCX stands for Core Complex and is essentially a group of CPU cores with their L1 and L2 cache and a shared L3 cache. For Zen 3, one CCX consists of eight cores, whereas on Zen 2, one CCX only had four cores. The CCXs are integrated on the CCD or Core Complex die. That's basically the CPU die. On Zen 3, one CCD fits one CCX, whereas on Zen 2, one CCD had two CCXs. Ironically, Zen 2 Threadripper had more fine-tuning options as there were double the amount of CCXs. For Zen 3 Threadripper, we only have 8 CCXs to tune. To figure out the appropriate CCX ratio, I simply started from a 40x baseline for each CCX, then increased the ratios one by one to the highest stable setting. As you can see, there's a bit of a spread, with the worst CCX clocking in at 4325MHz, and the best CCX clocking in at 4525 MHz. Then, the last setting you want to ensure is set correctly is SMT mode. This enables the additional threads, so you have 64 cores and all 128 threads. Then hit F10 and save the settings. So now, let's load up the operating system and benchmark. I'm running Windows 11 Enterprise, as it may be slightly better at managing as many threads as the Ryzen Threadripper has. Click start to run the benchmark. Ninety nine thousand two hundred and fourteen points, pretty close, but no cigar. Ninety nine thousand nine hundred and eighty nine points, so close. And there it is one hundred thousand and one hundred and ninety one points in Cinebench R twenty three. Let's quickly take a screenshot with all the available system information. This will come in handy if we want to try for higher scores later.
Next, I'll open hardware info so you can also see the system temperatures and voltages during the benchmark. You can see that even though the benchmark doesn't last that long, the CPU temperatures spike to well over 90 degrees Celsius. The TJ Maxx for the CPU is about 95 degrees Celsius, so we're pretty on the edge. Maybe a quick note on the cooling solution. I'm using the EK Quantum Momentum Monoblock, a Coolstream PE360 radiator, and an EK Quantum Surface P480M radiator. It's definitely overkill for a quick benchmark like this, but much needed when running sustained workloads. For more information on that, I suggest you check out Scatterventure number 43. And that's it. I thank you for watching and the Patreons for the support and see you next time.